Hi friends, Father Kerry Walters here, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. This one on what happens if God dies. The German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who enjoyed calling himself the Antichrist towards the end of his life, published a book in 1882 which contains a parable that has become famous and notorious. The book is Die Fröhliche Wissenschaft, The Gay Science, and the parable is about God's death. It goes like this. A man is wandering through the streets of a town at high noon in broad daylight, but he's carrying a lit lantern, and he's searching, obviously, for something. And when the townspeople see him, they're highly amused by this, and they say, what in the world are you looking for? And he tells them, I'm looking for God. This amuses them even more, and they begin to mock and to jeer at him. What? Has God gone missing? Is God lost? Is God on a vacation? Why are you looking for him? At which point the man becomes furious, and he throws the lit lantern to the ground, extinguishing its flame, and then he points to a church in the distance, and he says, I'll tell you where God is. God is over there in that building, and that building is a tomb. It is a whited sepulcher. It is the tomb of God, and God is in God's tomb because we, you and I, have killed him. God, famously says Nietzsche, is dead. Now, Nietzsche considered the death of God to be a very good thing indeed. To have killed belief in God through indifference, if not outright hostility, will, Nietzsche promised us in his books, liberate us, allow us to become Ubermensch, allow us to become full human beings without God hanging over our heads and threatening us and frightening us. But is it really the case that the death of God would liberate us? Is it the case that the death of God would make us full humans? Well, there is at least one person in the 20th century who would disagree with Nietzsche, and he is an unlikely person to disagree because he is an atheist, or at least a strong agnostic. I'm speaking about the American playwright Eugene O'Neill, the greatest playwright, as a matter of fact, that this nation has ever produced. He's frequently been called the American Shakespeare. In 1939, O'Neill writes a five-hour drama entitled The Iceman Cometh. It wasn't performed until around seven years later, which in turn was about seven years before O'Neill died. It is a masterful, brutal, and complicated play, and I can in no way do justice to it in the short amount of time we have together today. But what I do want to do is to point out an important, a crucial feature of the play, which I think O'Neill must have deliberately modeled upon Nietzsche's parable of the death of God, because we know that O'Neill knew his Nietzsche and knew him very, very well indeed. The central character in The Iceman Cometh is a salesman known as Theodore Hickman. His friends call him Hickey. And in the climax of the play, we discover that Hickey has killed his wife, Evelyn. And why has he killed her? Well, because, Hickey tells his friends, she too easily loved and forgave him. Hickey is a man who enjoys going on drunken benders that last for days. He is serially unfaithful to his wife, Evelyn, and every time he returns home after one of his debaucheries, she tells him that she loves him. She is sure this will be the last time he engages in this kind of behavior, and she forgives him. Hickey tells us, the people watching the play, that her ever-present love and forgiveness simply became too weighty for him, and it only accentuated the guilt that he felt because he knew that even though she loved and forgave him, and even though he vowed to straighten his act up as a consequence, he would very shortly return to his old ways. So in order to rid himself of this burden of Evelyn's love and forgiveness, he slays her. And he believes that that will liberate him from the guilt, that he believes that will allow him to live in the present, freed from the guilt of past discretions and free from anxiety about committing future transgressions. But in point of fact, what happens, Hickey discovers, is that he is now utterly forlorn because the one person who was always willing to offer him love and forget 
unforgiveness is dead. And it's not merely dead, but has been slain by him. This horrible crime, this horrible destruction of another human life, and the horrible destruction of another human life, simply because that human loved and forgave, is something that Hickey simply cannot live with. The guilt that he thought he would expunge from his being is now multiplied manifold. And as the cops take him away, he begs to be executed. Now, this is an interesting denouement, and it actually parallels what Nietzsche goes on to say about the death of God. The man who was searching for God confronts the jeering crowd, and he says to them, who can possibly wash this crime away from us? We, you and I, through our indifference, through our hostility, have committed the greatest murder imaginable. We have committed deicide, and no one can possibly forgive us for such a grave offense except God himself. But we've slain God, and so now who can forgive us? We have to carry this guilt with us generation after generation forever. What would it be like if God didn't exist? And even worse, what would it be like if you and I killed God? Well, I think one of two things is quite likely to happen. Either we sink into self-destructiveness like Hickey does, or we sink into a kind of quiet desperation, as the philosopher Henry David Thoreau warned us against. The other characters in The Iceman Cometh, there are 12 of them, are down and outers who can do nothing all day but sit and dream and drink. Their lives have been wasted. They live in quiet desperation. And even though they have not slain Evelyn like Hickey has, somehow they sense that God is dead. Somehow they sense that there is no future for them, even though they continuously talk about pulling themselves up, getting out of the bar, and finding their lives again tomorrow. Why is it so horrible to have slain Evelyn slash God? Why is it that you and I so desperately need the possibility of love and forgiveness? Both Nietzsche and O'Neill at least implicitly claim that, don't they? I think that we need the possibility of love and forgiveness because without love and forgiveness, there is no hope. Without an individual or God saying to us, you are still my beloved and I forgive you for what you have done, our future is closed. We truly are overburdened with a sense of guilt. We truly are overburdened with a sense of failure. The future has been closed and we are imprisoned in the past in an ever-present cycle of self-hatred, despair. So when hope dies, my friends, it's because the possibility of love and forgiveness is gone. And if we kill God, that possibility of hope, that possibility of love and forgiveness, they are all gone. The Russian novelist Dostoevsky once said, if God is dead, everything is permitted. With all respect to Dostoevsky, I think he's dead wrong. I think that if God is dead, if you and I have killed God, nothing is permitted because nothing is forgivable because the source of forgiveness is now gone and our lives, therefore, are without hope. And every step that we take, we take into an unknown future which can only further burden us with guilt. So my friends, we celebrated Good Friday last week, and on that day, we tried to imagine what it would be like if God died. I think that Eugene O'Neill goes a long way in helping us to understand how horrible, how tragic that would be. Nietzsche was wrong. The death of God doesn't liberate us. The death of God collapses us in on ourselves. It doesn't make us fully human. It stunts us because it deprives us of hope. Friends, I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thank you so much for watching. If you are of a mind, I invite you to subscribe to Holy Spirit Moments. At any rate, I will see you again soon. Thank you, and God bless.